So let's say that we have some close up water just splashing in from the side, like one was a wave somewhere over here hits on them, or maybe there's just a guy with a bucket throwing water. And it's just coming into the picture right here. Let's do some close up water. It's not gonna be nearly as green because it doesn't have all of the depth to it to really filter that light. This is a relatively small amount of water. So after I establish my existing color, I'm gonna really mute it a lot. Light comes in from, in this scenario, light coming in from the top because the sun is overhead. Dim light coming from all around, from the sky, but bright direct light coming from the sun. And when light comes in the top here, well, like I said, the nature of water is that when it hits edges at an angle, it wants to bounce off. So the sunlight is going to go through this drop at the point where it is in the most 90 degree angle, which is going to be somewhere on the top of it. So then all the sunlight's going to come right in that top. But that's not where you're going to see the brightest point of this. If this was a solid object, you'd have all this light on the top. We'll have a little reflected light up there but the brightest light is going to actually be reflecting off of the inside of the back side of the lower side of this drop, which is right here. Okay, from a side view, you know, from a side view, if this is the bubble, you know, the light comes in, it, it, if you're looking at it this, like say this is the side of the bubble, you're looking at it this way. Well, this angle right here is where the light's gonna bounce and be able to exit straight towards your eyes. So the result is that drops have a dark outline around the edge because that edge is not allowing light to get to your eyes. But they have a bright spot right here because that's where it's reflecting off of that inside wall of the opposite wall of this drop and then coming toward you. Now, I'm going to follow these, this same rule that there's this dark outline around the water, but not so much on the underside. And I'm just going to start drawing the shapes of more water drops right here. So we're going to make it all over. But here's where we get into the sh actual shapes. Water is similar to how I explained the sea foam, where it's going to be in these, this nebulous form, but where it's starting to get thin and split apart it's going to leave strands of water connecting and that's how you can make a more natural looking splatter. So let's say that we've got some a drop here. Let's say it goes up in here. Well, maybe here, see, these strands are connecting, trying to, maybe they just stopped connecting. Make some here. Okay. So here we're going to have like this dark shape because it's reflecting, it's bending down, it's reflecting the darker parts of what's down here. Then it's coming down and all of a sudden the reflection stops. Then we have these light sky colors behind because now it's bending this way maybe so you see the sky through it. So what this is, is we have a combination of the reflection on the inside with reflection on the outside, two separate reflections. On the inside, it's reflecting images. This side is reflecting images over here. This side is reflecting images over here, including the inside of itself. But this green color is because of maybe the green ocean or maybe what's on the ground, just a darker color. But now on the very, very edge, I need to put a little bit more of the same reflection I put on the rest of the water here. So you see, I'll just put a little bit of this right on that very edge where it's wrapping away. You know, and you might even have one of these little, one of these little starry guys. Right? These are always fun. Ridiculous. Okay. Maybe there's a person standing here. Maybe this is the reflection of all of, all of the landscape here. So if there was like a person or an object in there, 
it would appear in some kind of a distorted, skewed shape that was unrecognizable, but you'd still see the color. So it might be like that. When you see those hard edges and lines within moving water, they're just skewed reflections of an object. See, I love that blue on there. That blue just gives it that little bit of extra, little bit of extra realism there. Just make a bunch of little bubbles. I know they don't look like bubbles right now. We're gonna make them look like bubbles. Then I need a shadow color. I use the same, same colors I was using for the rest and shade the bottom of my bubbles. Shading the bottom side instead of the top side. But the bubbles tend to be less extreme in contrast when you're looking at the whole picture. Take the white. Make all my little highlights at the top of each of my dark spots. Okay, we're gonna go. All right, because this always happens. Same as the bubbles, but opposite. This will cause it to look much more natural and realistic, putting all these little drops flinging out. All right, and they're catching the light, so I don't need to do a whole lot of mixing and blending. I'm just gonna put a bright white dot at the base of each of these guys. And if you wanna get super detailed, you can blend those ridiculously tiny areas of your mural. Little water drops. Boom, boom. 